Speaker Beat. It's Monday, July 11, 2011. In this week's Speaker Beat, like a last place ball club trying to dump high priced players in mid season, Pfizer is unloading parts of their lineup. But is it enough? More on that. Plus, J and J has been playing like the bad news bears lately, but now they score a huge win. And Space Shuttle Atlantis launches to space for the final time, carrying with it a life science-based experiment that could help future astronauts explore the universe. All that and more in this week's edition of Beaker Beat, brought to you by Allergan. To learn more about Allergan, visit their company webpage on Beaker.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Beaker Beat. I'm Mike Justice. And I'm Allie Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are honoring baseball's Midsummer Classic, wearing our baseball uniforms. I love the World Series. It's actually the All-Star Game. Oh, they've been doing that one long? No, they just started. Pfizer plans to sell or spin off its animal health and nutritional products divisions, with analysts predicting the sales could be worth upwards of $22 billion. This is something we have reported to you previously in Beaker Beat, only now Pfizer chief Ian Reid has actually made it official. The units generate $5.5 billion in annual sales, or 8% of the New York-based company's revenue. Reed's strategy is to refocus the drug giant with one of the priorities of the potential sales to reinvest the money in developing new drugs. Bloomberg reports the sale could help the company sharpen its focus on late-stage candidates in the company's pipeline. Those include a lung cancer drug, a blood thinner, and a rheumatoid arthritis pill. Pfizer is dealing with declining revenue from the mega blockbuster Lipitor, but sales of those top three contenders could bring in $3 billion within four years' time, according to analysts surveyed by Bloomberg. Some analysts are not thrilled with this move, however. In fact, many thought the sell-off would include Pfizer's established products and consumer health units, which bring in $12.9 billion in yearly sales. Some investors also wanted the units sold to focus on higher profit drug development. They made that point clear with Pfizer's stock price dropping 2.7% on the sell-off news. But as one analyst put it, the animal health and nutritionals units were obvious first choices for disposal, and divesting the other two units is still a possibility. In fact, it might be premature to sell off the generics business now, because it may not be able to compete with the bigger companies in that arena. Wow, I didn't know they still use black and white cameras. They don't. It's a clip from 63 years ago. Oh, so do you know these players? Well, some of them, like Ted Williams, Stan Musial, Joe DiMaggio. Wow, you are old. Oh wait, DiMaggio was married to Marilyn Monroe, right? Yeah, he also played a little baseball too. You know, this clip is very artsy and all, but no one can see my face right now. Ugh, is that better? Yes, thank you. Great. Well, tell us what you think about this story or any story that you see in today's show. It's very simple. Click in the orange button below us. A box will pop up. Type in your comment. Send it to me. I promise I'll read and respond to every one of them. We would love to hear from you. And when you're done watching Beaker Beat, check out Beaker's blog and find out why electronics giants like LG, Samsung, and Fujifilm are making waves in the life sciences biz. Plus, see an interview with Onyx Pharma CEO Tony Coles and hear his take on the company's new potential blood cancer drug. Those stories and more on Beaker's blog. All right, so I brought you a glove. We're going to have to play catch together. Uh, That's what you do in baseball. Is this clean and sterilized? I don't know. It's a mitt. Put it on. just got my nails done. Oh, God. Put it on. We're going to play catch. you got to catch the ball. Catch what? This ball. You have to catch the ball. No, thank you. J&J got some good news for a change, scoring a big FDA approval for Xarelto. It's a blood clot prevention therapy viewed as one of the company's top new drugs for the U.S. market. The approval marks the first time an oral treatment has been given the green light to prevent VTE in joint replacement surgeries. J&J co-developed Xarelto with Bayer and has been working for the past two years to resolve questions raised by the FDA. The drug has been available in Europe since 2008. J&J is not resting on its laurels. The company is shooting for another regulatory approval to use Xarelto to prevent strokes in patients suffering from atrial fibrillation. So, we're in a uh, rain delay here on the show. So what do they do with rain delays in baseball? Well, uh, sometimes they'll uh, call the game like it's done, wherever they're at, and then sometimes they'll finish it the next day, or sometimes they'll just cancel it and start over. So how do they decide? Nobody really knows. The FDA's released a draft guidance exempting some Class II devices from 510K clearance requirements, specifically those with established records of safety and effectiveness proven over several years. The FDA will accept comments regarding the guidance within 90 days. Germany is aiming to cut drug spending, and that naturally has pharma companies up in arms. The country plans to do this through price freezes, mandatory rebates, and with a new price negotiation law that allows the health ministry to set prices for new meds if pharma and insurers can't come up with their own mutually agreed upon numbers. Eli Lilly CEO John Lechleiter criticized the health reform, saying the cuts are, quote, jeopardizing the country's legacy of pharmaceutical innovation, end quote. 
As the incoming chairman of Pharma, Lechleiter will be meeting with German officials over the next week to propose ways the new rules may be tweaked to be more industry friendly. The FDA is implementing a new strategy to handle rising imports and an increasingly complex global supply chain. In a recent report, the agency said it plans to begin partnering with its foreign counterparts over the next year as it does not have the resources to, quote, adequately keep pace with the pressures of globalization, end quote. Teva Pharma says it will back up any U.K. pharmacist who sell its version of the Pfizer cholesterol drug Lipitor. Pfizer, which has gone to court to stop Teva's copycat drug, has threatened action against pharmacists who sell it. But Teva pledges it will, quote, provide full legal assistance and support, end quote. The second major study released in as many months is showing that total calendar days for CDRH reviews have increased substantially. In 2006, applications for 510K devices cleared by the FDA took an average of 96 days. That number rose to 132 days in 2010. Well, Mike, how much money do baseball players make? Well, everybody you see in the field is a millionaire, basically. And some of them can make up to $25 million a year. Millions? Millions. And what am I doing standing here with you? Rude. Hey, get back here. We're not done yet. I need that umbrella. I can pay you in sunshine and good intentions. Sort of. TPG Capital affiliate IVD Holdings is buying diagnostics company Immucor for almost $2 billion. Based in Norcross, Georgia, Immucor manufactures and sells systems for detection and identification of blood properties prior to transfusion. Medtronic has purchased the remaining shares of Salient Surgical Technologies and Peak Surgical for a total of about $585 million. That excludes the value of Medtronic's existing stake in the two firms. The two deals, still to be reviewed by U.S. regulators, would boost Medtronic's surgical technologies business. France's N8 Pharma inked a $465 million development pact with Bristol-Myers Squibb, sending its shares skyrocketing by 65%. N8 will bank $35 million up front in the deal, which gives BMS worldwide rights to a Phase 1 anti-cancer antibody. It's the largest licensing pact ever struck by a French biotech. CareFusion will pay $150 million to buy Germany-based ROA, a maker of robotic pharmacy systems. The deal is expected to close early next year. Well, what's your favorite baseball movie? Well, it'd have to be The Natural or Bad News Bears or Bull Durham or Field of Dreams. Um, that's four. I said which one? One. Okay, well, you can't just have one. I mean, they all have different moods, I mean, depending on what I feel like watching. For example, like Field of Dreams has a sort of magical, otherworldly quality. If you listen closely, you can hear the music. All I hear is you making no sense. Ugh. Atlantis launched from Kennedy Space Center last week, beginning the final mission of NASA's 30-year space shuttle program. The mission is primarily a resupply trip, but it also has a biotech experiment in its payload. Scientists from Amgen and various academia sent a team of 30 mice which will get either an antibody that blocks the protein sclerostin or a placebo. The theory is that by inhibiting the protein, scientists believe they can prevent the bone loss that commonly occurs in low gravity. The sclerostin molecule inhibits bone formation produced by osteocytes, bone cells which form a nerve-like network that enable the skeleton to feel and respond to mechanical strain. Amgen, as you may know, has made bone strength a key focus in its R&D efforts for some time now. As for NASA, they want to see if this new approach could help future generations of astronauts, particularly those spending months in space, such as the current astronauts living and working on the International Space Station. Also on board Atlantis, Arizona State University's Biodesign Institute's unique vaccine research. They hope to find methods for improving a pneumonia vaccine's efficacy from space's microgravity, based on their previous space research. And while the astronauts work with the virus in space, researchers on the ground will mirror their efforts. Allie, do I have a catch? No, I wouldn't like that. You're killing me. You're supposed to say yes. That's it for this week's edition of Beaker Beat. I'm Mike Justice. And I'm Allie Lee. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Are you sure you don't want to have a catch? It's supposed to be a happy ending. I'm positive, Justice. Get over it. Want to have a catch? I'm walking away. Sit, Beaker. Sit. Good dog. Which hand does this go on? Okay, it goes on the left hand. You're right-handed, right? Yeah. So you catch it with your left. Okay. Is this clean? I don't know. It's a mitt. I just got my nails done. It's been in the garage. Maybe there's a spider in there. 